Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh from NARC Club, and today we're going to be talking about sets until failure and what we need to know and some science behind doing those kind of sets. Before we get started, a couple of channel updates. Jared actually posted to the channel, so I want to applaud Jared. I'm very proud of him. He finally decided to post to the channel. He finally got some time to do so. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, it's up. It was posted yesterday, so go ahead and go check it out. It's about recovery days and what things you can do during your recovery days. But right now we're going to be getting into sets until failure. All right, before we talk about what sets until failure does for you, let's talk about what it is and let's define it. So sets until failure is whenever you take a set and you do as many reps as possible until you can no longer do another rep. And for this kind of thing, it's also called concentric failure. And I'm at first real quick going to explain the difference between concentric and eccentric. Concentric is whenever the muscle is shortening during an exercise and eccentric is whenever the muscle is lengthening. So think about the bicep curl. When you curl the weight, your bicep is shortening, which is concentric. And whenever you're coming down, that's the eccentric phase of the lift, whenever your bicep is lengthening. Same thing with bench press. If you, whenever you're benching the weight off your chest, your chest is shortening. And whenever you come down, your chest is lengthening. So coming up when it's shortening is a concentric and coming down, which is the eccentric, is whenever your muscle is lengthening. Now what would be my concentric failure is whenever you can no longer do the concentric phase of the movement, your muscles fail and it can no longer do any more reps. So that is really the more in-depth dive to what reps until failure is. So now let's go into the pros of doing these kinds of sets. All right, so the first pro I have for you guys is that lifting with resistance and training until failure actually increases the amount of lactic acid that's built up in the muscle because the thing with weight is actually anaerobic, which increases the amount of lactic acid the muscle builds up because it can no longer use ATP. A buildup of lactic acid is actually beneficial for the muscle growth, as shown in studies, because a buildup of lactic acid increases the amount of intramolecular growth factors in the muscle. Another approach to lifting until failure is that it ensures that all muscle fibers in a muscle have been worked. And if you watched my last video about hypertrophy training, you would know that whenever you tear down the muscle fibers in the muscle, it promotes muscle growth because the muscle needs to replace what's torn up in the muscle fiber and hence creates muscle growth. All right, now that we've discussed some of the pros to a thing until failure, let's discuss some of the cons to a thing until failure. All right, so a study was conducted where it took bodybuilders who took every set till failure and looked at their hormone levels. And actually they found that bodybuilders who did sets until failure for every single set that they did there was an increase in cortisol in their bloodstream. If you don't know what cortisol is, cortisol is the stress hormone, and this hormone can actually hinder your muscle growth and your muscle development. So we don't want that in our bloodstream. So we want to limit the amount of sentinel failure we do so we don't increase the amount of cortisol in our bloodstream. Studies have also shown that if you do sentinel failure, there's an increase of the nucleotide adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. And AMP essentially activates a protein that controls the cell metabolism. So if you have an increase in this nucleotide AMP, that is a telltale sign that a cell is drained of energy, which is actually doing more harm than good, like in the last last con. And lastly, it is not a good idea to train till failure with compound movements. And this is because in a compound movement, you're using multiple muscles at once, and you could fail on a compound movement if only one of these muscles is in failure. So say in a squat, if your quads give out before your glutes and hamstrings, you're only really working your quads. So it's more beneficial to do quad extensions versus doing a squat because you're not gonna be, you're basically gonna be getting the same amount of work anyways. Also, another thing about compound movements is that we need to make sure that our technique stays good throughout the entire set. And if you train till failure, your muscles are going to tire, which is gonna make it a lot harder to maintain good form as you're performing a lift. And with compound movements, usually using a large amount of weight, it is not very advised to do that because if you break down form, it could increase your risk of being injured. To conclude the pros and cons to lifting until failure, it can do more harm than good if done incorrectly, but if done properly, it can really increase the amount of muscle growth and strength that you can build while training. So right now I'm gonna go into what some things you can do to incorporate this style of training to do it correctly, not incorrectly. All right, so the best time to do sets until failure is actually on the last set of a particular exercise. So for example, let's say we're doing bicep curls and we want to do four sets. Do the first three sets, let's say 10 reps, whatever rep scheme you want to pick. But then the last set, that's when you do it till failure. 
And notice that you do reps until failure, usually on isolation movements. And isolation movements is usually the last things you do in a workout. If you're not doing isolation movements last, you're doing your workouts incorrectly because you should be doing compound movements first and then isolation movements. But if you're doing isolated movement last, that means that the muscle is really on its last leg, it's really tired, and you really put that last bit of stress on it and then you're done. That's when that's whenever you end the workout with that, at least with that muscle, and you let it recover and you work out the next time. All right, that's all I have for Seth and Sophia. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something new. I learned a lot from researching the video as always. Next week, I plan to do a video about overtraining because I feel like this is a big issue with a lot of young people, especially since you have a lot of energy and you have a lot of goals and you're, you know, young people are pretty impatient. Uh, I know I am very impatient, but overtraining is a really big thing. It's really, really is real. And I feel like not a lot of people talk about it enough. And I want to strain you guys some of the harm harm it can do for, to you if you do actually overtrain. I'm also sorry this video wasn't super entertaining. I wanted to get a lot of information out about this because this actually is something that people can incorporate into their workouts. And I want people to know as much as possible before they do so. So next week, I will try and make it a little more entertaining. But um, that's all for me, guys. I'm Josh from Nar Club Fitness, and I will see you guys next time. Stay narc and proud.